So you're considering an OLED TV, but you're worried about burn-in. Let's talk about that. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and today I want to talk about the risk of burn-in with OLED TVs. Over the past 10 years or so, there's been plenty of talk on this subject, but there have also been plenty of changes in that time, especially recently. You may have heard conflicting stories from OLED TV owners, some saying they've had zero problems, others saying they've gotten burned bad. You may be aware of an ongoing burn-in test being conducted by ratings.com. There's a lot of noise on this issue, some of it valuable, some of it not. It's kind of hard to separate the wheat from the chaff, as they used to say. So I'm here to try to lend some perspective. I have a lot of experience with OLED TVs myself. I have friends and family with OLED TV experiences. I've heard from readers and viewers just like you, and I've spent a considerable amount of time speaking to engineers, both at the companies that make OLED TVs and those focused on developing the technologies that go into these TVs. From all of that input, I've developed what I think is some pretty solid guidance on the topic of OLED TV burn-in, even though it is very complicated, and I'm hoping you will find it useful. And if you do find it useful, or at least entertaining, please consider slapping a like on this video, subscribing if you want to see more, and commenting down below with whatever feedback you think might be helpful for me and the other folks who watch this video. I have been loving your comments lately, guys, so thanks so much for that. I'll see you there. Okay, let's dig in to OLED burn. The first thing I need to mention, you probably figured this out from the title of the video, is that this is part one of a two-part video series because I just couldn't cram everything into one video. And also, there are really two natural segments to this. We have the W OLEDs that LG has been making and shares that technology with Sony. And then we have the new QD OLEDs, which brings in a whole nother factor to this burn-in business. So we're gonna start with a little bit of a history, figure out how we got to where we are now and talk about the risk of burn-in with today's W OLEDs. And the next video, we're gonna get into some really important stuff around QD OLED. All right, moving on. So history time. Sometimes I'll say, feel free to skip ahead if you want, but this time I'm gonna ask you to stick with me because the story of how we got here affects the psychology behind how we regard our screens. And that bit becomes a critical component by the end of this video and the next one. So stick with me, I promise to make this fun. With that in mind, fun fact. TV screen burn-in has been a thing for almost 50 years. It was first noted on early monochrome computer monitors, probably because those were the first CRT display devices that were tasked with showing the same image on the screen for really long periods of time. If you're like me though, your first run-in with screen burn-in may have been the upright Pac-Man console at Pizza Hut. Pizza Huts were very different in the 80s. I mean, they even had salad bars. Anyway, the problem back then was that the phosphors on the back of the screen glass were permanently damaged by having to display the same thing for long periods of time, be that the border of a program window or the maze barriers on Pac-Man. It became so common that the screensaver was created to prevent it from happening. Still, burn-in wasn't commonly seen on TVs in folks' homes because, for one thing, it was rare that a TV would display static images in the first place, let alone for extremely long periods of time. There wasn't much of that kind of content that could cause burn-in, and I suspect people on average maybe didn't leave their TVs on for quite as long back then. I know my family and friends didn't. But then, then the plasma TV came along and people started noticing burn-in on their televisions at home. Interestingly, plasma TVs still used phosphors to emit red, green, and blue light, but they used a different method to excite those phosphors. Because of how plasma TVs worked, along with an increasing number of static on-screen elements and content, and possibly a growing average of hours used per day, burn-in became a concern for TV buyers. Eventually, plasma TV makers mitigated burn-in potential to the point that it wasn't an issue for most folks. Tricks like pixel shifting along with screen savers took care of the problem for the most part, but the worry that plasma TVs could suffer burn-in never really went away. I mean, I remember folks asking me if they should worry about burn-in in the same year that Samsung and Panasonic released their very last plasma TVs. 
So when LCD TVs started becoming more popular, you can understand that one of the reasons they might be preferred is because they didn't really suffer from the risk of burning. Yeah, technically you can wear an LCD pixel out so that it doesn't react the way it should any longer, but the hours of use that requires is pretty significant and it has nothing to do with a colored pixel wearing out prematurely the way regular burn-in does. Safe to say burn-in, as we've always understood it, isn't a problem for LCD TVs. Now, here's the interesting thing. The growing popularity and ubiquity of LCD TV technology is an important factor in the changing psychology around how we regard our screens now. That lack of burn-in risk changed what we expected from our display screens. With LCD, you can pretty much display whatever you want for as long as you want and suffer no consequences. Think about that for a moment. With no risk of something bad happening, no matter what you do, then why worry about what you do? You don't. You put whatever you want on that screen and you don't worry. In fact, you just come to expect that everything will be fine. That kind of freedom, if you will, is something that is unique to LCD TVs. But so many folks have bought so many LCD TVs and have had them for so long that they've gotten used to that carefree reality. And then OLED came along. This super premium display technology that looks amazing with its perfect blacks and awesome contrast and deep rich colors, truly premium picture quality and a premium price to match. What was true 11 years ago continues to be true today. If you want OLED, you're gonna pay handsomely for it. Though to be fair, OLED prices have come way down. But wait, this newer, more premium display technology suffers from burn-in? What? I mean, isn't that like going backwards? I understand why folks might see it that way. Burn-in is an old TV tech problem. My new expensive TV shouldn't have an old TV problem, right? Oh, but they do. They did. I mean, sometimes. OLED TVs use organic compounds, and those organic materials have a half-life. They can wear out, and the result of them wearing out in a non-uniform manner is burn-in. Fortunately, OLED burn-in is less common today than it was when OLED first came out, at least among WOLEDs. Actually, like plasma, OLED TVs have benefited from processes that minimize burn-in risk. And as a result, today's WOLED TVs suffer a very low risk of burn-in. Now, as promised, I'm gonna talk about QD OLED burn-in in the next video, but for now, let's talk about who might need to be concerned about OLED burn-in in general. Because even though the risk of burn-in has gone down, low risk is not no risk. And this may come as a disappointment, frustrating even, but there are no clear-cut guidelines to follow when trying to figure out if you might be one of the few at risk for OLED burn-in. That's mostly because there's really no hard data that exposes exactly when you'd cross a threshold from non-risky use to risky use. As I mentioned before, the cause of burn-in is static images displayed for long periods of time, repeatedly. Now I can cite some examples of what static images are likely to cause a problem, but defining what a long period of time is in this context is where things get a little fuzzy. Still, I think we can walk away with some helpful guidance here. The most common static image elements you're likely to run into today are the tickers or banners you see on sports, news, and weather channels, or from the user interfaces or head-up displays on many video games. Even with the tech built into TVs that reduces burn-in risk, that CNN, Fox News, Weather Channel, or ESPN banner can, over time, eventually cause burn-in. The same goes for video games, where part of the screen never changes. Uh, this might be the dashboard of a car in a racing game, or the head-up display in an RPG, for example. So those are the common things that can cause burn-in. But how long does it take for them to actually cause the burn-in? Well, part of the reason that it is impossible to come up with a one-size-fits-all answer is because there are so many variables. One variable is your TV brightness settings. Another variable is how long you play the game each day. Another is how many days in a row you play that game and for how many months. Look, personally, I would not advise playing the same content with those kinds of static images for more than three or four hours a day, every day, for weeks or months on end. That kind of use is likely to cause a problem eventually. Leave CNN on for eight hours one day, but limit use to an hour or two on most other days, 
you'll probably be just fine. Same goes for video games. If you go hard on one game with static elements for eight hours a day for a week, maybe two, you'll probably be okay. But if you're gonna play for four hours a day for a solid month, that starts feeling like it's treading into slightly risky territory. Are you starting to get a feel for that line you don't wanna cross? I would say if that kind of use doesn't sound at all like anything you do, then you have nothing to worry about. If you think you might use your TV in that manner sometimes, but not all the time, you're probably gonna be okay. But if you are honest with yourself and you're saying, look, I'm leaving ESPN on for six hours a day, every day, because that's how I roll. Well, an OLED TV isn't for you. You wanna drive your TV hard and that's fine, no judgment, but OLEDs don't like to be driven hard. The freedom that you seek, maybe the freedom you got used to and expect, it's in an LCD-based TV. And those have gotten pretty amazing as well. One big question is popping up a lot though. Does the guidance I just offered for W OLED TVs also apply to the new QD OLED TVs? Well, QD OLED is a different kind of OLED TV that seems to behave differently. It's reinvigorated the concern about burn-in on OLEDs, due in no small part to an ongoing test being conducted by ratings.com about which I have some real concern. So in part two, we'll talk about why burn-in risk on QD OLEDs may or may not be different than W OLEDs and what the result of this ongoing ratings test may or may not tell us. In the end, my hope is that no matter what OLED TV technology you're interested in, you'll be able to make a more confident decision about whether or not to buy one. Thanks as always for watching everyone. I'll see you on part two coming very soon. Hit this video with a like, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I love your comments, so keep them coming. And until I see you again, here's two other videos I think you might like.